Hi, you've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, October 8th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic, early October now, and you haven't heard much from me this season because there is not much to talk about. We've only had five storms, Edward being the last one, big hurricane that came up east of Bermuda which I never made a video on because it never was a threat to land, but it was a nice storm, uh, our only major hurricane this season. But this has been one of the quietest seasons, uh, perhaps the quietest in terms of numbers, since the high activity era began in 1995 with only five storms so far. We'll see if we get any more, uh, but really quiet year. And there are reasons for that, which I might talk about after the season ends or before next season begins, which will be an interesting discussion. Uh, but the quiet period continues in the Atlantic, and right now there's only a few areas to watch. Uh, we're starting to shut down the Cape Verde season now. Anything east of the Caribbean, probably not going to develop. It's been unfavorable all year anyway. But by October, we really start to shut down this area of the Atlantic. But there are a couple areas of low pressure, a couple waves here in upper lower two, uh, coming toward the west west northwest and may have a shot to develop in the southwest atlantic here if we look at the european out today too we see the low height anomalies north of the lesser antilles we see the uh, central north atlantic ridge to the northeast and a trough over new england this paints a pretty clear path out to sea east of the united states but you know might be something for bermuda to keep an eye on might bring some heavy weather up that way and we'll see if we can get a name out of it maybe a tropical storm maybe get that f name fay i guess it would be uh, to get named out of that system, but uh, not looking like a terribly productive pattern in terms of producing mature hurricanes, but we might see something come out of this disturbed weather as it comes west-northwest. The other area to watch is this large monsoonal gyre centered over Central America, kind of fighting uh, with lobes of vorticity in both the eastern Pacific and the southwest Caribbean, and the NHC has shaded this yellow for low probability on the Atlantic side over the next uh, few days, and you know, you never really know with these gyres. You got to keep an eye on them to see if uh, some part of the vorticity can rotate up towards Central America on the Atlantic side and maybe the Gulf of Mexico. The GFS is up to its usual tricks. Had been showing a hurricane developing in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico during the last several days worth of runs, and it's been showing that most of the year, in fact, and it's just now backing off. The reason I didn't make a video about it the last few days is because it is very. Uh, very untrustworthy, the GFS, if it has no other model support from the European or others, and it really didn't and is now finally backing off um, off of its pul bully pulpit for these West Caribbean storms and is no longer showing this thing blowing up. And that's probably what's going to happen is that most of it will stay out over the Eastern Pacific and we might get a new storm out here from that. But if we look at the European out today too, again, there's our storm or our wave north of the Lesser Antilles, but down here, Here's our monsoonal gyre. You see this northeast flow. It's not really trade winds, but it's uh, on the south side of this subtropical ridge here. When you have them oriented like this, it does favor something trying to linger um, on the back side here because this, this big, big trough, this wave is moving northwest. It really helps try to focus a little bit of this vorticity east of Central America instead of all being shunted into the Pacific. Now, most of it will go into the Pacific. Uh, but this pattern with this coming northwest does favor a little bit of a something trying to move across the Gulf of Honduras into the Yucatan Peninsula and perhaps eventually the Bay of Campeche with time. And if we look at the European out to day six, by the time whatever is getting going in the Pacific, we have this giant trough digging into the Great Plains. And if there's anything left of this monsoonal gyre over Central America, this would favor bringing it up perhaps into the Bay of Campeche here. And, you know, there might be a piece of it to watch for some development over the next several days. But uh, it's hard to tell at this point with these giant gyres. It's uh, really just a wait and see game, but uh, the GFS developing a clear hurricane up into the Gulf, not really going to happen in all likelihood given its uh, clear bias and the fact that most of the gyre is already getting focused on the Pacific side. And that's usually the side that wins because it's more favorable for that kind of thing but we keep an eye on it to see if a piece rotates up to the northwest during the next few days. Heavy rains for Central America in general will be a problem for mountainous areas inland there. Even if there's no storm about, these things can really dump a lot of flooding rain on this area, so those folks will need to watch for that. 
other than those two areas there's really not much to see in the Atlantic as has been the story most of the year and uh, because of that really quickly we'll take a look at the Pacific which has been far more interesting this year this is the Western Pacific best and strongest looking typhoon all year and uh, probably the best looking TC since high end uh, and uh, this is a cat 5 super typhoon really beautiful looking hopefully affecting nobody out to sea at the moment will eventually be moving north here toward the Japan uh, island chain and the Japan mainland here Okinawa may end up being on the west side of the storm but it's going to be a close call here's the forecast track from uh, JTWC here you see it bringing it east of Okinawa but there is wiggle room in that track and eventually toward the Japan the Japanese mainland there and uh, Again, they just had Typhoon Fanfone come up through there, through the Tokyo area, and this is now Vongfong coming up through the same area. Not a great situation for Japan. Fortunately, they are very prepared for storms like this, so hopefully damages will be minimal. Uh, but uh, this is a very good looking typhoon coming up and uh, it'll be interesting to see we had fan phone come up like this and uh, Vong Fong alongside the two of them combined are going to cool off a lot of the water in the western pacific and when we cool off this water in here it may uh, indirectly help get El Nino going out here in the Central Pacific finally because a lot of the problem for El Nino has been all this warm water in the Western Pacific uh, during the summer and that has really uh, offset some of the signal that you get from warmer water farther east so if these typhoons indirectly cool this off for a month or so it could actually help get this El Nino finally going for the winter but we'll have to see how that goes and that will play into how next year's Atlantic hurricane season goes uh, based on how El Nino behaves during our winter so uh, that's coming up already getting toward winter here the Atlantic hurricane season is not quite over uh, there's technically seven weeks left but in a year like this, it might as well be ending. But there are still some areas to watch in the Central Atlantic and near the Central American area. And other than that, nothing truly imminent right now that will be threatening land, except for the heavy rains again with the monsoonal gyre in Central America. So we will keep an eye on these things. And if there's anything else that pops up or one of these decides to develop, you will hear about it here. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.